So good morning. This morning my uh, my vlog is going to be on again on the healthiest way to cook an egg. So this is a diff a second way to cook an egg, and um, this is pretty much I mean this is pretty much frying an egg, but frying it without any oil. So only using kind of the cholesterol or whatever little oil of the egg is in there to fry it, rather than adding oil. Um, you know by by not using a lot of additive oils you can really decrease you know pretty much eliminate your risk or completely eliminate the risk I mean there's only some slight exceptions which are really like familial familial hypercholesterolemias but you really will um, eliminate your risk of hypercholesterolemia the problem with hypercholesterolemia is that cholesterol starts to collect in the uh, arteries and form plaques um, and when it does that, it affects the blood supply to that organ and those surrounding tissues. And as a result, the organs that are affected start to, to die from hypoxia and hypoxemia. Um, one, of the, one example of that is with the heart, with your cardiac muscle. Um, when these plaques start to form in the coronary arteries and the des descending branches from those coronary arteries... It puts you at great risk for a myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack, um, or you know one form of a heart attack. Um, and the problem with that is, once your heart dies, that's pretty much that is the end of your life. Um, you can get a, a cardiac transplantation, but it's a very morbid uh, surgical procedure, where the surgeon, cardiothoracic surgeon, cracks open your chest through your sternum or the the open cracks open the the sternum of the patient if you if you're not the one undergoing this procedure and then exposes the heart and operates on those vessels while using cardioplegia which actually stops the heart um, and during that time they use a bypass system um, where, where a machine provides the oxygen oxygenation um, to the blood and removes the toxins that have built up in the blood to supply the rest of your organs with oxygenation and blood and nutrients. So pretty much, you know, these are the preventative steps that will, you know, eliminate risks for these diseases, barring any genetic predisposition that is really a matter of, you know, your genetics and your the evolution of your lineage of ancestors over time leading you to that point, which is a different category. Um, but I'm pretty sure those people would also benefit from this um, because, you know, it might make some subtle differences to their level of hypercholesterolemia. So, yeah, the big, big benefit from this way of cooking and this particular demonstration is that limiting lipids and oils that are... Um, introduced into your diet, um, especially processed oils, will reduce your risk of hypercholesterolemia, which in turn will reduce the risk of atherosclerosis, which is another name for a lot of those plaques, and as a result will reduce your risk for things like heart attacks, which are myocardial infarctions, stroke, so you know cerebrovascular events of your brain or of the population of people you're feeding, and um, peripheral vascular disease, those are the three big arter arterial and vascular and ve venous diseases that are result from atherosclerosis and hypercholesterolemia. All right, so for this, there's not too much preparation, not too much to do, but... You'll want to pan, preferably a non-stick pan, so I'll go ahead and get that ready and put that on the stove. Obviously, hmm. so I guess I'll have to do this one in two parts because I didn't have any eggs. So I need to go to the grocery store to go buy some eggs for this morning. So I'll go do that now. Let me go get some eggs. But in the meantime, let me just finish up with the rest of the preparation. I'm going to need a bowl for mixing.
Oh, here it is. And I like to use a whisk for uh, uh, beating the eggs and blending the eggs. And then I'll also add a little bit of water. All right, so I'm just going to go get these eggs, and then I'll finish up this vlog and show you uh, a healthy way, one of the most healthy ways to, to prepare and cook an egg. All right, and since it's only going to be one egg, I'm just going to have one piece of bread with it. It's even a part of my one diet. All right, so I got the eggs right there. Um, so now Star Market in, in Back Bay, unfortunately, at the Prudential, it only opens, well, it closes rather from 12 a.m. till 6 a.m., where it used to be 24 hours. So I had to kind of wait for it to open. Anyway, the other thing why uh, using eggs, um, you know, some of the food choices that I, that I reliably use, like eggs, bananas, bread, and chicken, you know, they're some of the most economical foods. The, an egg, the cost of one egg, um, when you buy it as a dozen, dwindles to about 20 cents per egg, um, which is actually really economical, and it's a pretty good meal, and it's really healthy. It's excellent for the brain, even, because of some of the cholesterol and lipids in the egg. And then a banana was only about 17 to 25 cents per banana. You know, they sell that also by the pound, but um, per banana it works out to be about that. And then a chicken thigh is only about a dollar thirty-eight or so, depending on the, the weight of the thigh, too, but which is a pretty good meal in and of itself. So those are really economical meals as well as being very healthy when prepared properly. So anyway, I'm going to show how to to uh, prepare an egg in one of the healthiest ways ever. So, so there's my whisk. There's the egg. So I'm just going to crack it. This is pretty much just a scrambled egg without any added oil. And that's the point that makes this a very healthy meal especially for people who are overweight or at normal weights um, so now you know there's the egg in there and here's my whisk just gonna whisk the egg until it's well mixed since I'm scrambling it I add a little bit of water you can add milk I add a little bit of water because it, it makes it uh, and just a little bit, like less than a teaspoon, and it just helps the egg to break up when uh, when I'm scrambling it. Since this is pretty much ready, I'm going to turn my pan or the burner rather onto high to heat up the pan. So. So there's the egg that's ready and let it sit. There's the pan and the burner is up to high. I guess you can see that. So just waiting for this to heat up. I usually turn the burner on almost as soon as I'm getting ready to scramble the egg. But I waited a little longer, so I just have to wait for the pan to heat up now. And then, um, so what else is there? So yeah, anyway, I do add the, a little bit of water because I do find that it helps it to scramble a lot easier rather than, you know, scrambling it with a, a spatula or um, using a fork, you know, um, to kind of break it apart. Um, the water does that. For it, since it's breaking down some of the bonds between the uh, between the the proteins of the egg, and the and actually, so it's actually proteins in the egg, largely in the white part of the egg, as well as in the yolk. But it's also genes in the yolk, so we're actually eating the genes of a chicken um, when when eating an egg, which is quite interesting. 
but it still tastes great. <laughs> and it still feels good. That's the other thing. Um, yeah. I guess on a side note, while I wait for this, the pan's almost heated. Um, one of the things I've found as I've gotten older is that vegetarianism, um, and maybe a little bit of veganism, but really more vegetarianism for me, is a lot, uh, is, 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 is kind of helpful as I'm getting older and my caloric output is decreasing because of age, because I'm tired. My body is physically tired from all the demands of youth um, and the wear and tear. You know, gravity's effect on my body, uh, the wear and tear, injuries that I've had, things like that. So I definitely have to uh, focus on my nutrition even more now to maintain a healthy body, which is actually really effective and even more efficient than exercise because I don't have to exercise much to maintain my weight or to remain healthy. Um, exercise starts to dwindle to the null with a very healthy diet. It becomes very minimal. You know, doing things like walking, maybe yoga, stretching, you know, meditation, um, you know, prayer can even be a form of exercise. Uh, typing, writing, you know, any daily activity becomes a form of exercise that's, you know, beneficial especially with a very healthy, nutritious diet where I don't have to rely on a high caloric output to burn off the energy, the overconsumption of energy on a daily basis that I might have done had I not learned all this stuff or known this stuff. Or I even grown up in a, a family that's relatively healthy conscious. I mean, on an absolute scale, my family's pretty conscious of health even, but Probably not the most superior. I mean, there's definitely others who have outperformed the Kennys. Um, but, I mean, as Kennys, we do really well. So we're pretty cool. But, you know, if, for instance, Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, he definitely outperformed me on the football field, getting FIFA World Player. And there are many other examples, but he's definitely the one that I, I would have aspired to be more like um, and wanted to train with as well as some of the clubs that he, he was at, you know, like Manchester United and Real Madrid. And even, you know, some of his clubs in Portugal would have been fun. But, um, and then academically, yeah, there are many. I mean, Ian Dunn, you know, he's a neurosurgeon, so he definitely outperformed me as a surgeon. You know, I, I got some interviews. And I think if I really focused on that and really just stayed to that rather than making health and nutrition so important, I might have been able to get in, because I did have some clear opportunities that I kind of decided not to go with, because they weren't really what I wanted, unfortunately, um, and not really where I wanted to be either. But yeah, so others definitely have outperformed me that way too. But yeah, overall I do well, I can hold my own, so, but all this stuff makes a difference. So anyway, the pan is ready, it's time to fry the egg without any added oil. So let's get this here. And this is a very simple process too. I'm just gonna turn the heat down just a little bit. It's gonna cook within about a few seconds. There goes the egg. And I can already smell it heating up. The pan is really hot, so. Obviously, you'll have to be careful if you're frying it for the first time, but the egg will cook rather quickly, and then I'll just scramble it a little bit. This one is going to be more, a little bit more like an omelet because the pan is so hot, so it's cooking really quickly, but it's still going to be nutritious, delicious, and edible, so that's pretty good for me. And obviously a a no non-stick pan probably is preferable because I don't know how sticky the other pans are, but at least with a non-stick pan, the egg just does not stick to the bottom, even without oil. 
unless you really leave it for a long time. And there are the flakes of the egg from the uh, bottom of the pan, which is all ed edible. So there it is, that's one scrambled egg. You know, it's kind of like a scrambly omelet egg. And for that, I'm just gonna have one piece of bread. And actually the bread that I choose for this one is this King's Hawaiian bread. This one is really good. There's other breads that I like too, but these are a little sweet, which is what I like. But it's not so sweet like a donut. So that's pretty much the uh, going to be my breakfast. I'm going to do one more vlog on eating, you know, the healthiest way to eat an egg. And that next one is just eating it raw, which is quite healthy. And I'll go into a little bit more of those details when I start that vlog. Pretty much I'm going to do next because I think I'll still be a little bit hungry. And I wouldn't mind finishing up these healthy egg vlogs. But uh, yeah, raw egg is actually quite healthy, even though there is risk of salmonella. So I'll discuss that in a little bit. All right, well, bon appetit.